Well, us, because we also like using as much as we can. farm wife in her natural habitat buttering her loaves <laughs> that doesn't sound right <laughs> loaf pans Loaf pans. good afternoon beautiful people all right I, I've elected to start the video in here because the wind is blowing and like I'm about ready to take our wind chime down because it's just like clanging it like delicious. you know it's a real nice wind chime I made this wind chime a long time ago and it sounds great in a nice breeze, but in really strong wind, the actual pipes clang together and it's just horrible. Yeah. So probably gonna have to take that down because you can't talk next to it. No. Yeah, so I elected to start in here. I'm gonna go outside and play in the sun. Yesterday we had- Torrential uh, rain. Torrential rain. It rained all day long. I think we got over an inch and a half of rain. What you got going on here, lady? Uh, bread, because we have been out all weekend because you know, we had people in the Bread was not on the menu, so I did not worry about making bread, but now we need bread again. So yes, bread I'm, and then... I'm excited to have bread again. I know you are. And then I will be making scrapple today with the stock we made from the bones and head of the pig and meat bits that are scraped off of those bones. When we were having our class, part of the thing that hand hewn they do with the parts is like you save all of your bones, you save, you know, the feet and stuff that people don't normally use, you, it would just be waste, they make stock out of it. Mm -hmm. Well, us, because we also like using as much as we can, yes. we've discovered we really like scrapple. Yes. Like, it's pretty much a staple when we have scrapple on hand. Right. Um, so you'll make a huge batch with leftovers, like what we have right. now, and stick it in the fridge, freezer, and then for breakfast, slice off a couple pieces and fry them up, and mm -hmm. it's delicious. It is. Delicious. Well, they got done with the stock, and they pulled, I think it was Doug, pulled out all of the uh, the bits and pieces, the bones, and it's all cooked. And he's looking at it, and I can see he's like having a struggle. <laughs> and he kind of turns to me, and he's like, hey. He goes, is all this going to the chickens? I looked at him, I was like, heck no. It's like, we're gonna pick those bones and get all the meat off, and we're gonna make scrapple. And the look on his face, he's like, oh good. He's like, oh good. It's not going away. <laughs> Because honestly, there's a lot of meat bits left on the bones. There are. Even uh, Doug and Andy are great butchers, and they they don't leave a whole lot on the bones, but right. there's still just you know little bits. Nooks and crannies. Nooks and crannies. Yeah. So we uh, I brought the uh, the lug of bones and everything, and me and Meg sat and picked, and you got a whole bowl yeah. of meat. Yeah. Here, I'll pull it out. Yeah. So like. That is a, a lot amount. of pork. Yeah. And it's got some good fat it bits does. to it, so it'll be nice. And so this will be ground and then another scrapple. We did it with bubbles. We did the same thing. We took, you know, the head and bones and all that. 
stuff we didn't eat. Stuff we didn't eat and uh, did the same thing. Made you know, scrapple. And it was really good scrapple too. It was really good scrapple. The kids love it. Like they love it. I love it. So, yes. Like it's, like I've said before, like I used to really enjoy Spam when I was younger. But then, you know, once you learn how Spam is made and what's in it, it's like, I don't know if I want to eat this. Yeah. But just like a fried breakfast meat. Mm -hmm. Like it's just... It's good. Yeah, and it's got cornmeal in it, so it's like hearty and kind of sticks to your ribs. If we have liver, then I'll put liver in it sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, this time we use liver for liverwurst. Yeah, we made a whole bunch of liverwurst, so the kids obviously. Love that too. Yeah, the kids love the liverwurst. The kids, they're weird. They uh, they enjoy stuff like that. They have refined palates. <laughs> <laughs> no, we have found if you don't start off a sentence with, well, you're probably not going to like it, but sure, go ahead, then you don't put the preconceived notion in their head. Well, you I'm just not gonna let like them this. try it, yep. and they eat all kinds of stuff. Part of, part of the thing, too, is, you know, we used to kind of be like that. Like, oh, you probably won't like it. It's spicy. It was. Uh, now they all like spicy stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, FOMO, the fear of missing right, out. Right. <laughs> all right. I'm going to go outside and play in the mud. Okay. And I'll leave you to it. All right. Good luck. All right. Whew. Yeah, so it's windy. Let me get over here where it's not so windy. All right, so something that I've needed to do um, all weekend is I need to get in here in the chicken coop, basically pick everything up. If you notice, you can't see the bottom two by four. So that's about, I don't know, three, four inches of the stuff that used to be in there all over the ground. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Rooster. So I need to get all this in there and then I need to add some more wood chips. My compost game has kind of been lacking for the past, I don't know, really since it got cold, not having an abundance of stuff to uh, put in the compost. Really all I've got right now is wood chips, which I can make do with, but it, the compost has kind of slowed down. So I'm gonna go grab a pitchfork and uh, get a scooping. I'll see if I can get this all cleaned up and ready to go again. Got everything picked up that needed to be picked up. This is actually not done composting. It's still, even though it, like on camera, I'm sure you can't see, at a distance it looks like compost, but it's just really muddy wood chips. Um, what's happening in the floor of this coop, because this is a static coop and we're not moving, what is happening is as this starts the conversion process to turn from, you know, plant matter into beautiful black gold, compost the smaller particles break down and they stay in here you get low enough there is red clay under there and whenever I scrape all this up I try to get down till I see red clay well what's happening is as we are building soil this spot all of the small stuff that I can't pick up with a pitchfork stays and so we're generating this like black slime and it's just it's organic matter that's just a really really small size that gets all over fresh wood chips and makes them look all black and rich and then as soon as you take them out and they get washed off in the rain or whatever you can see they're still wood chips so pile this back up this is what we're using to dispose of offal there is some stuff that we didn't use you know the large intestine and stuff like that and that's at the very bottom of the pile we had all that rain yesterday so everything in here is soup I mean you can see there's standing water as I've picked this up, the water is just seeping out. I don't have to wet this down, it's wet enough. I'll put it in here. It's gonna be too heavy for them to really move for a couple days. Um, it'll just continue to drain. And so probably what'll happen is this'll get so hot in the next couple days, I'll come out in the morning when it's cold and frosty and I'll see chickens standing here warming their feet. This will compost again and what, by the time, that's pretty much my timer, by the time they've scratched this out, it means they are done sorting through it, they've got everything out of it that they wanna get out of it. By then, the heat will have broke down all of the offal that's in that pile. That pile is big enough to dispose of a pig's worth of guts. It's a great system. I think what I am gonna do to help it out in here, I'm gonna go get some, some of these wood chips that are out here, and I'll bring them inside and just put them down so they don't have to walk in muck. Yeah. 
out of the mud. People say that chickens are the gateway drug of homesteading. That's what did it for me. Sitting and watching them go crazy for bugs and worms and whatever else, watching them scratch. If you actually sit and watch a chicken, it's it's actually quite quite fun to watch. Alrighty, let's make scrapple. I'm gonna go over this pretty quickly with you. Um, it's actually very, very easy. It's like one of the easiest things to do with a pig as far as I'm concerned, um, besides making like just, you know, a roast. But this is pretty easy, pretty quick, and um, it makes a really great breakfast food. For those who aren't familiar, scrapple is a mixture of meat and broth, um, maybe organ pieces if you have it, like we were talking earlier, we could do the liver if we had it, um, and then cornmeal. I think some recipes call for flour too, but I just do cornmeal. And you cook it together until the cornmeal gets thick, pour it out into loaf pans or some kind of pan, and then let it cool until it's completely cool, and then you can slice it. Um, the cornmeal is what helps make it so thick. Very similar to like cornmeal mush or polenta, if you're familiar with those, we're just adding meat into it and some seasonings. Pretty easy and pretty tasty actually. So like I said earlier today, I don't have the liver or any of the organs because we used those in other things. So it's just meat from the bones and the head. I ground them in my food processor. Um, I could have pulled out the grinder, but I didn't want to get it all messy for such a little amount. And then I've got my stock that um, we got ready over the weekend. And then I've been actually simmering it down and simmering it down because I didn't need as much stock. So this is pretty concentrated. I brought it back up to a boil. Um, I had it cooling last night. Brought it back up to a boil, and we're gonna use part of that in this. So, I've looked at a couple different scrapple recipes, and I've tried a couple different scrapple recipes, and just like everything else, I'm modifying it <laughs> the way I like it. So, what I like to do, personally, is basically equal parts broth and meat, maybe a little bit heavier on the broth side, and then I do one cup of cornmeal per three to four cups of broth. I tend to do it per three cups of broth because I do like a thick um, scrapple that's really easy to slice and it's not gonna fall apart. Um, but you could do a quart of broth and you get a little bit thinner, but it, it'll still set up all right. So I'm going to measure out, I know I've got a quart here. There's four cups of meat and I'm gonna keep measuring the meat and then I'm gonna measure the broth and then we'll figure out what we need to do for the cornmeal. That's another four cups of meat. So that's eight cups all together. I'm gonna grab eight cups of broth. Ooh, very, very hot broth. Okay, you can see it's like kind of putting E. I know it does not look appetizing at all right now, but it will. This is actually a little thicker than I think I want it, so I'm gonna add some more broth and then we'll add our cornmeal. Okay, before I add the cornmeal, I'm gonna salt this now. And I'm adding a little bit more salt than I would actually put in here if I was just eating just this, like as a soup, I guess, if you ate this as a soup. Um, because the cornmeal is going to soak up quite a bit, and it'll need some salt as well. So I'm going to heavily salt this, and then the cornmeal is going to like balance it out a bit better. We don't salt our broth, just because that way it's a little more versatile, so I don't have to worry about over-seasoning anything. But what we do add to our broth is um, onions and peppers and garlic and all that kind of stuff. And I'm going to add some black pepper in here. Okay. It's heavily salted. That's good. I'm going to bring this up to a boil. So that was 12 cups of broth. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do four cups of cornmeal. Because like I said, I like it on the thicker side. So it's like heavier and it's easier to slice. Sometimes if you don't do enough cornmeal, then it gets, it's too loose and it's hard to slice and it might like fall apart. Um, I've actually, when I first started making scrapple and I was experimenting, I actually had a batch where I got it in the loaf pans and everything and I tried to slice it and just like mushed. And I pulled it all out of all the loaf pans, put it back in a pot, remelted it with a little bit of water, just kind of like got it squishy again, and put in more cornmeal just to try to get it to the consistency I wanted. And that was when I was following recipes and I was like, this is not working, who eats this? <laughs> so, um, like I said, I've, I've experimented and I've tweaked and I've made adjustments to 
get something that I like that's easier for me to fry because I don't like it if it's falling apart in the pan it's just a pain to try to like flip it or anything so I like slices like firm slices so this is what I do I do a um, heavy on the cornmeal lighter on the broth and this is all going to be dependent as well on if like if you had a liver in here it's going to be a lot more liquidy than just meat so that would also adjust your liquid ratio to the cornmeal so it's just kind of like go by feel kind of thing all right while i'm waiting for that to come to a boil um, i'm going to prep my pans what i'm putting them in usually i use my bread pans but my bread pans have bread in them right now so i probably should have planned that better but <laughs> that's all right we'll use these these are just glass um tupperware storage containers are not tupperware brand they're just glass um and then i'm going to line it with parchment paper and that way I can just pull it out. I don't grease these, I don't do anything like that, but with the parchment paper it helps be able to like pop them out. I'm gonna do four cups of cornmeal. I'm gonna stir this as I'm slowly pouring this in so it doesn't clump. Come on. Now the hard and slightly dangerous part is <laughs> stirring this while it cooks and it's going to bubble, like it bubbles a lot. So I actually am probably going to wind up putting on my oven gloves because I have been burned. Actually, I think every time I've made this I get a burn on <laughs> my arms <laughs> because it bubbles and pops and gets on my arm and you know, I'm like trying to stir and like fling it off. And so I'm just going to cook this until the moisture is absorbed into the cornmeal and the cornmeal is cooked and it takes a little bit but it's not too bad it's probably about 30 minutes or so and you don't have to stir it the entire time but as it thickens you have to stir more frequently because it'll uh, burn on the bottom and that's not tasty at all I should mention I'm doing this over like low heat too for the simmering okay this has been simmering for a little bit the cornmeal is cooked now and I'm actually gonna add more cornmeal because I just tasted it and it still feels mushy and I know I want it to be on the firmer side. It will firm up quite a bit once it cools down, but I know I want it to be on the firmer side, so because I've made this a couple times before and I kind of am familiar with the consistency, I'm gonna add more cornmeal just to be on the safe side. All right, because I added that cornmeal in, now that has to also cook and soften, so we're gonna let this simmer again for a little bit longer. All right, this is why I always wind up burning myself. Okay, as terrifying as this looks, I can tell it's done um, and it's thick enough, like there's enough cornmeal in it because it's getting those big fat bubbles that are popping. And that's usually what spits cornmeal all, all over you, so be careful. <laughs> but um, I know it's like, it's good and thick. See how thick that is? So now I'm gonna be turning this into my pans. Alrighty, these are gonna sit until they come to room temperature so I'm not putting super hot stuff in my fridge and making the fridge work over time. So room temperature and then once they are room temp, they will go in the fridge to finish cooling and solidifying. And then tomorrow and over the next week or so, we will um, slice these up and fry them. Whatever we don't eat in the next week or so, um, I will put them in the freezer. I just package them up. You can package them in a loaf or you can slice them and then freeze them that way. Like I said, we love this as a breakfast meat, sometimes just a quick snack. It's really good, we'll eat it with ketchup or um, maybe hot sauce. Some people eat it with maple syrup. I don't think I've tried that yet, but it does sound good. This is a really great way to use up all the little bits. Um, you get a shot of like bone broth with all the gelatin and everything in it. You get the meat, if you got organs in it, you got organs. And I mean, it's just tasty. You could put garlic powder and all those spices and stuff in it if you wanted. I've even thought about putting like cayenne to make like a hot scrapple. I think that would be good. I didn't do it this time, but I might do it next time. And I've even used scrapple as a way to use up bits of meat in the freezer. When I was experimenting and I wanted to just try to make scrapple, but I didn't have, we hadn't butchered a pig recently. So I just took deer meat that I had in the freezer that I needed to use up, cooked it until it was like falling apart ran it through the food processor 
and use that meat with some, I think, chicken broth that I had. And I used that to make scrapple just to see how it was. And it turned out great that way too. So you don't have to like butcher a pig to make this. You could make it with whatever you have on hand, whatever broth you have. Um, I've used chicken livers from the freezer before when we've needed to use those up and thrown those in there with the meat. I mean, it's just whatever you have on hand. I think whatever scraps <laughs> you have, you can make it and not have to like go butcher an animal to get it done. So one of our favorite meals. Um, if you guys try it, let me know because I'm very curious to see what other people think of it. I know at first when I heard of it, I was like, uh, I don't know about that, but after trying it, it's like, oh, this is actually really, really good. It's like spam, but healthy. So there you go, scrapple. What are you getting into? Some cheese. Some cheese. Is that good cheese? Mm -hmm. And looks like you might have stole some dough. Yeah, she did. Oh, she had that prior. She yes. didn't rob it. No, not the time. So what are you making? I am making, okay, so we have lots of leftovers. And we've kind of hit the point where we don't want to eat the leftovers as they were anymore. Yeah. Uh, I sensed a little mutiny this morning. So, there was no mutiny. Uh, yeah, I there sensed was... it. It was coming. There was going to be a mutiny. <laughs> I felt it coming. So I am uh, re reorganizing these leftovers. So you're taking the leftovers and making them look different. Yes. Hey, so, that's a new meal. So this is um, bits of roasted chicken that are left over. And I'm mixing it with Caesar dressing. That's Thank you. Dead. I needed some dough. Mix it with Caesar dressing and Swiss cheese and green onions, and I'm gonna roll it in this dough. And then I have beef left over, which I'll do another one with mustard and cheese. Ooh, it's gonna be good. Roll up, yeah. So like a bread meat roll up. Yeah, yeah. That sounds amazing, That'd actually. These make such a great lunch. Watch out, sister. As leftovers. That's what I was thinking, actually, because I was gonna do it as a log, but I was like, you know what? Actually, as pinwheels, and they're quick and easy to grab tomorrow. That is homemade mustard. It is homemade mustard. We're gonna have to make homemade mustard with some of that horseradish we're growing. Oh yeah, that'd make be... Make it nice and spicy. Whew. I've, uh, I've been doing my best to eat all the beef. You have. That's You've done a good job. And this is a great use for what's left. Cheese and beef. Cheese and, and, beef. Mustard. and mustard. What a great flavor combo. Yeah. Those look like they're gonna be delicious. They will be delicious. We've had these before. Mm -hmm. These are delicious. Mmm, mmm, mmm. No? No? Yeah, we're good. I think we'll uh, gather everybody in and sit down and eat. It's kind of weird. It's 5.30 and it's still light outside. I love coming into spring. It's it's encouraging to have the, uh, the daylight last longer and longer every day. It's not very often. I'm the first one done eating. I know. And I ate two of them. Who did? They're quite filling. <laughs> All right. It's Thursday, so it's a shorter video today. Sort of. It feels like it. Mm -hmm. It's a shorter short, day for short us day. because yeah. we got to hightail it to karate. So. Yep. Anyways, I hope you all have a good weekend, and we will catch you guys on the next one. Bye.